How did polygamy become fully entrenched in Mormonism, especially when the Book of Mormon preaches against it? By 1850, all of the Quorum of the Twelve in Utah were promoting its virtues. Four had left the Quorum earlier. Lyman White, John E. Page, Amasa Lyman, and William Smith. Others rejecting Young included the Smith family, Nauvoo State President William Marks, Nauvoo Temple Architect William Weeks, and many others, including half of Nauvoo's population. Brigham Young later made polygamy necessary for exaltation in the kingdom of God. Today, it is one of many taboo subjects in church meetings. Later, presidents of the church have also repudiated the practice and a number of other doctrines put forth by Young. Polygamy is only one form of what was called spiritual wifery in early church history. It is a phrase used to describe sexual sin between a man and a woman that is justified by religion or religious rites. It can include fornication, adultery, polygamy, polyandry, and even pedophilia. It is not associated with homosexuality, however. The sin of spiritual wifery rose up among the saints quietly in Kirtland and then took hold firmly in Nauvoo. Later, other more positive phrases were applied to it in connection with marriage during Brigham Young's tenure, including plural marriage and then celestial marriage. As addressed earlier, 13 different terms were attached to it in the later part of the 19th century by the saints in Utah, primarily as a deception tool to avoid arrest by representatives of the federal government. Outsiders simply called it polygamy. Did not originate with Joseph Smith, but with Satan and those influenced by him. He put it into the heart of Lamech, the seventh generation from Adam to first practice it, and then centuries later, he did the same thing with Brigham Young, after he was exposed to the spiritual wifery of the Cochranites north of Boston, along with the works of David and Solomon in the Old Testament. Satan wanted to destroy Joseph and God's work. Spiritual wifery rose up among the saints in three phases. It first entered Mormonism at Kirtland, Ohio in the early 1830s. Later, it secretly expanded among the Twelve at Nauvoo in the early 1840s after they returned from their English missions. And three, it then became an institutional practice later in Utah in the 1850s after Brigham Young revealed it had been practiced since the early 1840s. To understand how this occurred, we must separate the actions of the Prophet Joseph Smith who fought against it right up until his murder from the actions of Brigham Young and some of the Twelve who embraced it secretly in Nauvoo at first. This separation explains much of our messy, modified history. The division resulted in the separation of the Brighamites West and the Josephites East after Joseph's murder. In the next chapter, we will see that some in the Twelve, Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, Willard Richards, and John Taylor formed a secret chamber at Nauvoo to practice spiritual wifery and then install it within the church in a more respectable form as plural marriage once the Smiths were out of the way. Prior to this widespread acceptance, most of the Twelve were first exposed to spiritual wifery in some form in one or more of the following ways. By 1832, Cochranite converts from the Boston area were being brought to Kirtland, Ohio by missionaries Orson Hyde and Samuel Smith, Joseph's brother. These converts brought some of their beliefs and traditions with them. The Cochranites coined the phrase spiritual wifery Brigham Young served at least two missions to the Boston Saco Maine area, Cochranite territory, doing so alone by his own request. He would later bring back Augusta Adams from this area to Nauvoo. Augusta was Brigham's third wife. Augusta's child named Brigham was born and died just before she and Brigham Young were married. She remained married to her first husband when she became Brigham's second polygamous wife. This is also true of Brigham's first plural wife, Lucy Ann Decker. Two of Brigham's first three polygamous wives were part of polyandry, something Young accused Joseph of. 
and something the church today associates with Joseph Smith. It is a lie. Her husband's suit for divorce made national news as it involved a major figure in Mormonism, the president of the Twelve, Brigham Young. There were two church conferences held in Cochranite territory between 1834 and 1836. Nine of the apostles are known to have attended at least one of them. Polygamy was a focus among clergy and elite educators in Germany, England, and America in the 1830s and 1840s. This is when most of the Twelve were serving missions in England away from Joseph Smith and their wives. One influence there was the book, The Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, the Sons of Jacob. It supported polygamy, citing the special patriarchal priesthood of the ancient patriarchs. Some 100 copies of this book were sold at the church's Millennial Star office in Liverpool. Later in Nauvoo, another publication, The Peacemaker, became a strong influence among leaders there. It was printed on the Times and Seasons Press in 1842. Joseph's name was placed on it without his knowledge or permission. Brigham Young in 1874 and Lorenzo Snow in 1899 both said that they had experiences while serving as missionaries in England. 1839 to 1845, revealing that polygamy was divinely inspired doctrine. This was reported many decades after their missions when they were immersed in the practice. Elder Edwin Stafford, a 70s serving with the Twelve in England and Nauvoo, testified in a letter to a friend that he believed Brigham Young was practicing adultery in both cities. The apostles were idolized by many of their converts, increasing the potential for inappropriate relationships. As early as 1832, LDS missionary work was occurring among the Cochranites at Saco, Maine. The Cochranite movement justified fornication and adultery within religious rites. Some of the first Cochranite converts were baptized by missionaries Orson Hyde and Samuel H. Smith in 1832. Coming to Kirtland, Ohio, they brought some Cochranite traditions with them into Mormonism. Satan used this age-old mix of religion with the lusts of the flesh to corrupt the church. Brigham Young served at least two missions to the Boston Seiko area. He was given permission by the Nauvoo Stake High Council to travel there alone. Two church conferences were held in Seiko, Maine, home of the Cochranites between 1834 and 1836. In these conferences, nine of the apostles were exposed to the practice. The Lord warned Joseph and the saints that Satan wanted to destroy them in an early message in 1831 in Doctrine and Covenants 38. It addressed a mystery, a thing which is had in secret chambers. That thing was spiritual wifery. Six scriptures were given the saints between 1830 and 1833 tied to God's higher law of monogamy. They were D&C 1925, 3813 and 14, and 28, 42, 22 and 23, section 49, 15 and 16, section 63, 12 and 16, and verse 4 of the original Doctrine and Covenants 101. This section was known as the Article on Marriage. Inasmuch as this Church of Christ has been reproached with the crime of fornication and polygamy, we declare that we believe that one man should have one wife. Two years later, in 1837, in another effort to stop the Cochranite influence from gaining further ground into the Church, the 70s Quorums at Kirtland published their own statement against spiritual wifery among the Saints. Their resolution asserted, that we have no fellowship whatever with any elder belonging to the Quorums of the 70s who was guilty of polygamy. Forty years later, in 1876, President Brigham Young removed Section 101 from the Doctrine and Covenants. 
without a church vote. The same year, he replaced it with pro-polygamy section 132, a supposed revelation given to Joseph Smith on July 12th of 1843. For more on the Cochranite influences, see Joseph Smith fought polygamy. Polygamy in Mormonism appears to have had additional roots in the English missions of Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, Willard Richards, William Clayton, and others between 1839 to 41. These men would become senior members of the secret chamber later in their return to Nauvoo. Young and some of the other members of the Twelve had already been exposed to spiritual wifery in the Boston and Seiko areas. They were now away from their wives and Joseph and Hiram for an extended period. They were also held in high esteem by most of those whom they were teaching. The conditions were ripe for experimentation with spiritual wifery by at least Young, Kimball, and Clayton. They were married men. Young's cousin, Willard Richards, found his first wife while serving his mission there. Europe was a fertile ground for both polygamy and Freemasonry in the early 1800s. Polygamy was an especially popular subject of discussion in religious and university circles in Germany, England, and the U.S. at this time. Polygamy became an acceptable practice among some small groups in those countries. A number of books published in England reveal that it was a popular subject of discussion for some time prior to the arrival of the Apostles, first in 1837 and then in force between 1839 to 45. Note the books below. The last one was sold in church offices in Liverpool. Latter-day Saint Samuel Downs apparently showed the pro-polygamy book, The Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, the Sons of Jacob, to a number of church leaders in England. It presented Jacob's plural marriage and concubines as godly, stressing the unique patriarchal priesthood of the ancient patriarchs of the Old Testament. Some 100 copies of it were sold in the church's Millennial Star office in Liverpool, England. A short review of it was published in the Millennial Star. Reprinted by Downs, an elder in the local LDS ward, the book was dedicated to a patriarch in Manchester. Downs stated, having shown it to many of my brethren and it having met with their approbation, they are wishful to possess themselves of it also. I now at their solicitation for the church and for mankind in general, send it forth unto the world. His new preface to the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs. In meeting later in Utah, where Brigham first introduced new section 132 to the saints in 1852, and where Joseph's name was falsely attached to it, Apostle Orson Pratt gave a stirring sermon citing the ancient practices of the patriarchs of the Old Testament as a primary reason for reinstituting the same practice in modern times among the saints. Pratt would eventually take ten wives, four of them were from the British Isles. Pratt authored the seer by request of Brigham Young, believing that polygamy was the most efficient way for the Lord to raise up a righteous and numerous people. Later in Utah, another influential book on polygamy would be promoted among the Brethren of the Twelve. This one was printed on the Times and Seasons Press. The experimentation with spiritual wifery by some of the Twelve in England did not involve plural marriage, at least yet. It began in adultery and fornication. 170 serving in England with the Twelve observed curious behavior by Young with one woman there. He accused Young of adultery. In addition, numerous journal entries by William Clayton reveal his love for a mistress he had during his mission there. His wife and children are absent from this same journal. The entries involve references to foot washing in connection with intimacy which followed, a clear tie to Cochranite spiritual wifery. In 1841, Heber C. Kimball brought his first polygamous wife back to Nauvoo with him from his English mission. 
This was two years before Joseph's supposed revelation on polygamy in 1843. Like two of Brigham's early polygamous wives, she too was married to another man at the time. Her name was Sarah Peake Noon, apparently baptized just before boarding the boat to America. She had Heber's child in Nauvoo. Their child died at an early age, so too those of Young and Clayton. They were taken like the child of David and Bathsheba in the Old Testament, the one conceived in adultery. The secrecy of Sarah Peake's pregnancy and marriage to Heber wasn't kept for long, however. 35 years later in Utah in 1874, Brigham Young knew that these and other historical events might come forth to reveal the truth about Heber C. Kimball's additional wife in 1841. Young moved into action to protect the First Presidency and his longtime friend Heber. Young and Kimball were friends and Freemasons prior to their baptisms into the church. Heber was especially committed to the Masonic Brotherhood, also called the Craft. At this point in time, in Utah, Young was president, Heber was first counselor, and Willard Richards was second counselor, with 109 wives between them. To protect Heber and the 1852 lion announcement that Section 132 was a revelation given Joseph on July 12th of 1843, Young appears to have put forth a new narrative in 1874. He spoke of a vision or revelation that he had on polygamy while serving in England. And for the first time, 35 years after it supposedly occurred, some suspect this revelation, occurring sometime between 1839 and 1840, was cover for Heber's pregnant wife brought to Nauvoo in 1841, and perhaps cover for William Clayton's journal entries which addressed his mistress, Sarah Crooks. No specific date was tied to Young's revelation, and its actual content was never revealed. His 1874 statement read, While we, Brigham, and ten of the twelve apostles were in England in 1839 and 40, I think the Lord manifested to me by vision and his spirit things that I did not then understand. I never opened my mouth to anyone concerning them until I returned to Nauvoo. Joseph had never mentioned this. There had never been a thought of it in the church that I ever knew anything about at that time. But I had this for myself, and I kept it to myself. And when I returned home and Joseph revealed those things to me, then I understood the reflections that were upon my mind while in England. But this communication with Joseph on the subject was not until after I had told him what I understood. This was in 1841. Young's new narrative opened up a large can of worms, receiving a revelation for the whole church in place of Joseph when against God's word in Doctrine and Covenants section 28 verse 2 and section 43 verse 3. In addition, the revelation went against Young's former 1852 justification for polygamy that Joseph began plural marriage among the saints via a July 12, 1843 revelation. Young then put section 132 into the Doctrine and Covenants in 1876 without a vote from the church. Lies were thus used to support polygamy from the very beginning. Reports today suggest Young took his first plural wife in 1842 at Nauvoo when he was 41 years old. She was 20 and remained married to her first husband. This precedes Joseph's supposed revelation by a year. At age 42, in 1843, Young married three more women, including a 19-year-old and a 15-year-old. He thus had four wives prior to Joseph's murder. Two remained married to previous husbands. In the latter part of 1844, after the murders, he added ten more wives, three of whom were teenagers. One was 15-year-old Calissa Caroline, 
two years after the murders in 1845, he added 21 more wives, two of them teenagers. And he added 20 more wives during a single month in 1846, five of them in a single day, February 3rd. Their ages being 55, 42, 41, 36, and 18. At age 45, Young married one additional wife. She was 16. Finally, in his 60s, Young married five more wives, three of whom were in their early 20s. All told, Brigham Young had taken 55 wives, nine of whom were teenagers on their wedding day. Five were 15 through 17 years of age, and 20 of whom were in their 20s. He later divorced 10 of them. In the six months following the murder of the three Smith brothers, from June to December of 1844, Brigham Young went from four wives to 14. Heber C. Kimball went from two wives to 10. It was an explosion of spiritual wifery, Brigham's way. There were 56 new plural marriages in 1845 alone by church members. By 1846, the spiritual wives movement expanded fivefold to 255 plural wives. The three men leading the secret chamber at Nauvoo ended up with 109 total wives as the first presidency of the church in Utah. Young had 55 wives, Kimball had 43, and Richards had 11. How could Young and others in the Twelve in England go against the clear teaching of Joseph Smith and Jacob II in the Book of Mormon and other scripture? The answer may involve two things. First, Brigham Young had taught that the apostles had a special priesthood, that of the patriarchal order of the ancient patriarchs in the Old Testament, allowing them to have as many wives and concubines as they wanted. This priesthood involved a special sealing doctrine provided by Elijah. This false doctrine was borrowed from the book, The Peacemaker, printed at Nauvoo, see chapter 5. This new doctrine became part of the modified temple endowment Young put in place to promote polygamy after Joseph's murder. Young used the special priesthood as justification for polygamy later in 1852 when he wrote verse 1 of section 132. The very first verse of this section uses the word justified in connection with Joseph's supposed inquiry to the Lord about doing the works of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, and Solomon, an inquiry touching the principle and doctrine of their having many wives and concubines, Doctrine and Covenants 132 verse 1. And two, Young and others may have begun teaching that Joseph was a fallen prophet, partly because he didn't support Young's view on priesthood, and because Joseph later admitted that the Spirit was not with him the last few days of his life because he returned to Nauvoo after originally heading west to avoid trouble in Carthage, Young stated, If Joseph had followed the Spirit of Revelation in him, he never would have gone to Carthage, and never for one moment did he say that he had one particle of light in him after he started back from Montrose to give himself up in Nauvoo. This he did through the persuasion of others. If Joseph had followed the revelations in him, he would have followed the shepherd instead of the shepherds following the sheep. In his own manuscript diary of the Nauvoo Legion, Joseph said, Contrary to the counsel of the Spirit, I am now no more than another man. This was repeated in the School of the Prophets meeting later in Utah by Colonel Stephen Markham. Abraham O. Smoot, one of Nauvoo's police officers, stated years later that Joseph went as a lamb to the slaughter in opposition to his better judgment and the Spirit of God in his heart at that time. For all three statements, see Quinn, Mormon Hierarchy, Signature Books, page 145. This loss of the spirit was just days before his murder, not the years of secret polygamy that had taken place in Nauvoo after the Twelve returned from England through 1841 to 1844. 
Joseph's loss of the spirit the last few days of his life was expanded to the last few years of his life as a convenient justification for Young and others, those who took charge of the practice of this whoredom. It was Young who approved all sealings of multiple women to any one man at Nauvoo. Apostle William Smith was later chastised for not seeking Young's approval in his early plural marriages.